I decided, you know what, this is ridiculous. I posted a little rant on Facebook. I didn't <laughs> name names. I just said, I think it's time like this stops. Like this is old. Yeah. And then Mothership posted my artist bio uh, is my face at like it. <laughs> <laughs> then the title they put Lady Complains. Huh? Yeah. Mothership. Yeah. Hey everyone and welcome back to The Hot Pot where we hop into different transitions in life. I'm Q. I'm Joey. I'm Nick and today we have a very special guest joining us to talk about career switches. We have Valerie in the Woo! house. Woo! AKA Val, AKA Valism. <laughs> wow, what wow, the synchronicity. So Val, please uh, introduce yourself. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Valerie. I made a career switch from corporate into fitness. So now I'm a full-time freelance personal trainer. Wow. wow. Okay, so talking about career switches, right? Your current jobs, how different are they from your first job? I've been in the same industry doing similar things. Yeah, same. Still doing nothing and everything. <laughs> <laughs> same also. I think mostly in the media, advertising kind of mm. thing. But yeah. Belle is definitely here because she <laughs> obviously did a career yeah. switch. Yeah, my first job out was like headhunting, so recruitment. Mm. I switched one more corporate job after that. Mm. Uh, I did software sales mm. for AI tech company. And then from there was when I made the switch into uh, fitness. Okay, so actually like when I talk to a lot of um, friends, right, they are all around the same age as us, right? A lot of them tie their identities very closely to their career. Mm. Are, you, are you like that also? Actually, no. Eh. Mm. Um, but I think my train of thought is always like, since I'm in this, what is the purpose of what I'm doing right now? I think most uni students after graduating, it's immediately, let's just find a job, mm. corporate job, and then let's yeah. just get yeah. things going, right? Without thinking about their passion or purpose as much. Yeah. So I at what so point too. did it change for you? So I did an internship at a bank, at a local bank. And then this guy asked me like, so what do you think? Like, you know, six months here, is this what you want to do? Like, how do you find them? And then I said like, yeah, it's really exciting. It feels very prestigious. It feels really fancy. Like, the money is great, but I don't think this is what I want to do, you know? Mm. Then he looked at me and then he was just like, you know what? It's just an important to have had the experience to know what you don't want than what you do. Because there's so many things out there, knowing what you don't want is only going to cut off like a whole mm. bunch of other stuff for you. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. How about you guys? Like, do you relate to what Val said? Yeah, I think so. Just that like, I, I don't have the balls to change career. Honestly, <laughs> say that again. Say that again. <laughs> click that. Can we click that? <laughs> no, the balls. Then click that. I don't have the balls in this part. No, I, I totally relate. Like, yeah. sometimes I do think about switching a whole industry. Yeah. But it scares me to just restart. And mm. knowing that if I restart, I might be older than the people who are yeah. in the industry. And I think ego and pride is in the way mm. yeah, in some yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. Of course, then you need to go and start from scratch again, right? And then you are not 100% confident that like, oh, currently now I am good or above average mm. in, in, relative to the industry or my peers. But then if I go there, what if I'm like average or like below average? Mm. Then like, yeah. wow. It's quite check. Yeah, I feel like most of the time, right, if, if let's say the opportunity presents itself, you can career switch or you change your industry, right? And you are guaranteed to succeed. Mm. People will take it. Mm. We're just afraid to look like we're trying or fail at trying. Mm. Like we're just a bit embarrassed. Mm. They say it's like cringe to look like you're trying, right? But <laughs> I love trying. I think yeah. like success comes from trying something new. So mm. I feel thankful to be a freelancer because that means I can do a lot of different things. Uh. So my career is a bit of everything. Mm. Sometimes I feel like I crave stability. Mm. When I had to get a full-time job because of COVID, I, oh my God, I loved having pay. Like, what's your salary? Yeah, yeah. fixed yeah. salary. Then what do you mean if I'm sick, I'm paid claim. to stay at home? Yeah. Mm. What does that mean? Mm. Like, new, it was very new to me. But then also very quickly, I was like, oh man, I, I prefer to work on my own timeline. Mm. So I, I feel like the grass will always be greener on the other side. Um, no matter what, we will always compare and want to get do better, right? Yeah. But I think you'll find other ways in life to fulfill yourself. Mm. Actually, are you the type that need to love your job? I think I can always find something. Eh. To be frank, that was one of the jobs like in corporate that I didn't really enjoy. Mm. But then I was just like, what else can I look for inside here? I like the people. Oh. Like the, the you find reasons. Job. Yeah, I'll just have to. Mm. Because if I'm here, like, I might as well make the best out of it. You were silver honestly. lining it. That's half full. That's half full. You're quite an optimistic person la, in, in, in some sense. I don't sense. know. Eh. Sometimes people are like, why are we so emotional? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can relate. Hey, be emotional is a good thing. Yeah, 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 emotional yeah, yeah. women also. But you don't do it. Because you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you're already emotional, then after that, like, then you choose to be glass half empty. Then it's like, ooh. Yeah, that's day. true. It's, like, mm. it's okay. We can be very passionate about half water in a glass. Yeah. I'm quite glass half empty. Same. But just do. Uh. 
Yeah. So I don't need to love my I don't need to love mm. my job. No, I think back then you you had to love your Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I was younger, I think I needed to to like my job. But mm. then now it's just like the perks, benefits, having like good income and things like that. Yeah. You know? I honestly True. saw yeah. the switch in Nick's eyes, right? Or general aura, like maybe two, three years ago. When he <laughs> he and I met for dinner and then he said he started talking about honestly, just just have like a job that you you quite like. Yeah. Then after that you Fulfill yourself in the other ways that like social, yeah. hobbies, yeah. Travel, yeah. interests. Go and, like, have hobbies. Yeah. 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 You mentioned about stability just now, right? I just wanted to direct it to Val because mm. it was stable in your corporate life and then you shifted to yeah. being a fitness yeah. trainer. Yeah. yeah. So how was that? I actually feel like uh, I got very lucky but also it wasn't complete luck in the sense that I planned everything out. I knew that if I failed there were places I could go back to. And it was actually during the COVID period because I spent days in the gym. There, mm. will, there will be like girls or friends that want to come and try. And then like the time that I spent teaching them, it's, it's like exhausting in the sense of like maybe you're talking a lot, you're like mm. a lot of energy. Fun. But then like when they get something, it's just like... Oh, you cannot oh, explain gosh. that kind of feeling. It's like Taylor Swift. She said she can get tired, but she'll never get tired of doing this. Well, yeah. Great way to plug. <laughs> <Taylor Swift. laughs> While we're here in this area of your journey, mm. what were some considerations you had when you decided to make that transition? Like, what mm. were the criteria or motivations for you to actually go and make that switch? So, it was the period of time that I, uh, I was at in life. So, I mapped out all my financial liabilities which at that point I was lucky it was not much because I was living with my parents. And then I mapped out my financial goals. Mm. And I think it was more of just, if I don't do this, like, I really don't think I will have the guts to ever do it. There was just such a strong push that said, like, you got to try now. Mm. And if you give it a solid year or two and you fail, like, go back, you can still start in corporate for, like, until you're 60. Mm. How you know? old were you when you... I was 25. Wow, good age. Mm. Yeah, it yeah, was that's good age. Really good like, age. That's a good age. But is there like a is there really a too late to career switch? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Like if I want to be surgeon now, I think too late. <laughs> that one will be too late. Uh. <laughs> Some things are like it's please, never too late unless you want to be doctor yeah. 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 That one or is like if I want to be Cristiano Ronaldo. No, I think if it takes a lot of education and mm. learning, then it's a little too late. But actually, I've seen friends that like so I study mass com right. Then when I was uh. In class, there will be someone that was like, oh, a former like like nurse. Then you come and study mass comm. And then now they're really like full on in the industry. So even though they are like so much older than than everybody else, they still manage to like catch up in some sense. Lah. Mm. Yeah. So I think in, in that regard, it's never too late, but also need to be a bit practical. Lah. Like if you are 40 and then you want to be a full-time athlete, then that one a bit hard. Yeah. yeah. I think practicality, then also like... <clears throat> Like you mentioned, there's a bit of like the ego and the pride, right? When mm. it's like, you know, you have to restart. So I think there's that portion that you have to accept. Like, I might be a noob in this, mm. you know? It might feel very natural to me, but what if I go in and I really suck at it? Which was something I had to go through also. Mm. I was like, can I actually coach formally? Like, mm. really? Like, and have people pay me money to do this? Like, I didn't believe in myself. Mm. Yeah. So you gotta have like the confidence and then be willing to restart. I always see people like, you know, other channels featuring uh, a lawyer, business owner, transition to become a hawker, oh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, well, respect eh. Yeah. 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 Like, well, how do they have this courage and guts to... Yeah. I feel like these stories prove to you that security and fulfillment is not standardized. Mm. Like, you would think that someone who's a lawyer, who's earning big money, who spends so much on education and they're still willing to walk away from that. It just shows you that it wasn't fulfilling them and they want to do something else. But to me, I could want a career switch to become a lawyer. Mm. You know what I mean? So you should, I feel like comparing is the source of most of, of our problems. Like, yeah, it's really yeah. the, the yeah. thief of joy. Like truly. Mm. I would love to be a lawyer. Eh. Huh? Really? Yeah. I think you'll oh be a God. great lawyer. <laughs> I like to she, fight. She, no, she talk a lot, right? no, she's like <laughs> firm. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask if you were to career switch, what would you switch to? So you're a lawyer, then you eh? Honestly, I, I mentioned before I would like to go into fitness. Ooh. But I'm not hey. I, I don't have to be like yeah. fitness trainer. Like I just want to be in the fitness industry. Yeah. Next time I text you. Yeah, text me. Hey Val. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> My semi-retirement plan was to become a lecturer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's why, he, I think. Wow. Yeah. that's why he has been doing Poly that. Lecturing. No, I feel like he could open a like cafe. I don't know why I see that. Oh, actually, I don't mind also. La, but that would be like 
I think it's a mm. it's a loss loss making business. It is lah, but yeah. you know the passion about coffee, then you and Jess hand churn the ice cream or something. Hand wow, churn wow. the ice cream. But Bell, <laughs> if let's say you get to Curse one, 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 one more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. Again, <laughs> where will you go? Wow. Can you think else? Okay, you do corporate already, you do fitness already. Mm. What? What? <laughs> I would love F and B, but F and B very scary. If a guarantee got money, I will yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's one that I was thinking about. F&B, I always yeah. wanted my own cafe. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I can see you doing that. In Japan, maybe. Really? <gasps> I don't know. She do like, I was thinking Bali. Hojicha. Oh, Bali. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I will yes. go. I was like, totally you like... You can do both in Bali. Yeah, like fitness and cafe. Yeah, yeah you yeah, eat, yeah, then yeah. you burn the calories, then you eat again, then you burn, then you just stay there forever. Okay, yeah. guys, come to my cafe <laughs> next okay, time. Yeah. Enough of our dreams. <laughs> Enough of our dreams. Enough Let's come back dreams. to reality. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, guys, what do you think are some signs that you should be making that switch? Or at least reconsider where you're at? Actually, I feel like I have experienced a lot of signs that I should be making a switch, but I just ignore. You okay or not? <laughs> oh my gosh. He, no, he wear the Red. Like, yeah, colored lenses. This is red. Like, looking at like like producers' notes or oh, uh physical exhaustion, uh, modem, <laughs> lack of passion, and things like that. But then yeah lah, In all seriousness, if you are feeling these sort of things or just generally miserable on a day to day going to your your job mm. or like even going into work, then can consider. Mm. The other bit also is like if there's something that you feel very strongly for that you want to pursue further. Yeah. Mm. So like in Val's case, like if there's already like that fitness aspect and that feeling, mm. yeah, then I think it's easier to gravitate towards that. For Val, were there any other signs for you? Mm. That, what was the biggest push factor? It was pull. Uh, it was a pure pull factor. Okay. If there wasn't that pull, you think you would have switched or just stay? Like if I didn't know fitness at all, yeah. like if I was, mm. I think I'll just stay. Oh, mm. you were exposed to a world yes. that you, okay, okay. And I was yeah. like, I got devil into it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think maybe sometimes you need to have that pull. So you need to expose yourself to more things. Mm. Like, okay. Maybe if there's one push, I think it will be working on someone else's time. Uh, that is something that I struggle with a lot. I feel like if you generally have the type of personality where you want to try, you want to try something, and your workplace limits you with mm. that kind of creativity of how you approach something, how you would tackle a challenge, if there's that kind of limitation and it does affect you then maybe you can consider something mm. else. Like, mm. It doesn't have to be freelance. It can be a job that mm. gives you more mm. space to try. Mm. Mm. I think the four of us are definitely open to career switching. But what about people who don't want to? Actually, I think that's fine. Yeah. Like, if you are happy not making a career switch, but not necessarily happy with your job, <laughs> but like you think that you can stay, I think yeah. that's okay You also. can stay within the same industry. Just mm. change company lah, maybe, you know? Yeah, or... <laughs> <laughs> like aspects of your job because I think like some people also stay for like financial stability and like good pay which mm. is fine especially yeah, if you have wrong. like yeah. liabilities right commitments or your kids you got a house that kind of thing Yeah. so sometimes it doesn't need to be so drastic as like a complete industry change like if you change jobs then you have a new team a new environment sometimes that's all you need um, rather than like oh I'm gonna up and like flip table and mm. and go do something else. Flip table. Yeah. I mean, there are people who make the switch and then they realise being their own boss is totally not what they expected and then they go back to it. Which, mm. I think there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you you try it and I feel like if you didn't, you would have regretted it your whole life anyway. Yeah, exactly. You would have kept wondering like, what if, right? Mm. And I think people shit on structure or like, corporate companies or big companies mm. but there's a reason why this system has lasted for so long because it provides stability for some and for some people they they want that like some people like working on someone else's time I, I can fulfill it for you then they draw the boundary then when out of office hours I do what I want because mm. even when you're a boss right and your company grows and you scale you still need to hire people mm. then now you become the boss stressful la. yeah some people don't need to live love love la, during their yeah. working hours <laughs> yeah, they exactly. can live love love after Cynthia yeah. got big life outside office on. <laughs> sorry Cynthia is I don't know <laughs> probably out there <laughs> question, question part Guess, okay, first, okay, guess, guess first, guess first, guess first. I hope you get a good question. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is something nobody agrees with you on? Oh, oh. your hot take. Hot take. Come. Pineapple on pizza. Don't like all oh, yes. Yeah. I love. Oh. You love. I love. I love. I, love. I like. On like fruits on... with meat. Oh, fruits with meat. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's I nice love strawberry and banana in a salad. Hey, where is so the blueberry and where chicken? Where is the meat? Is, uh, blue, yeah. Blueberry and chicken. Yes. yes. No meat. Apple, oh, and meat. Oh. Apple and chicken. Apple and chicken. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing these combinations? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, yeah. I do not. Okay, like, I'm with okay, you on pineapple and has pizza. Been. Been. <laughs> what is the most trivial thing you have cried over? Or maybe if like I cannot find something in my room. 
Then it's a bad day, right? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Why is this happening to me? Actually, I can't get it though. I get it, I get it also. Sometimes when it's like the... It's the, the bad day la. It's, it's the bad, bad day, day, then yeah, this yeah, is yeah. like the last straw. Do you care what other people think of you? <laughs> wow. We all know this. As a people pleaser, um, I think innately always la. I think it's good. I think it's good to care a little bit, mm. but not to let it control your life. But yeah. I think as the years have gone by and with more therapy, I start to give less f Let's go therapy. What is the most useless talent you have? Best at this question. I can do my the the tongue in the That's so lame. You do say what can you say that? Talent. No, everyone, you can do? No, can you all do you, this? You can. Oh. Okay, I not. can't do uh -huh. that. Some more, you see what he's doing? He's doing tongue <laughs> gymnastics. It's, it's not very not as nasty. It's useless. Uh. Okay, since you're talking about taking the leap, right? Mm. And some people being scared, right? Mm. How how do you overcome that fear? I didn't let myself think too much about it. Mm. Yeah, because I knew very well from the start, like the fear will stop me. Mm. Yeah. In, I can tell you that like, in like, my parents' eyes, it's probably not the right decision. Like they sent me to go university. You know, I came down, I had a good job and mm. everything. Like nothing was wrong. So why are you doing this? You mm. know? I guess the fear was for me was mostly like I don't want to disappoint my parents. Mm. Which then pushed me to make sure that like, I'm going to do well. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So let's say that you've made the switch and then now you've quit your job, you're starting the tra career transition, right? What are some challenges that you think people don't really see or know? So when I first left my first full-time, right, I had that period where I was like, okay, if I leave this, right, I'm back to freelance. Mm. And I had that slight fear in me. Even though I was doing freelance my whole life, I still had that hesitation. Mm. It was a little lump that I felt like, you sure ah? you're going to go back to this? Because remember how happy mm. you felt when you get a constant paycheck. Remember how nice it was in the beginning. And I still felt like gratitude for this, this job, right? But wow, the, the, no one talks about the struggle of being a freelancer or, or first leaving in that your initial reaction is to relax. But then when you relax, right? Mm. That then means you're not working. No money. <laughs> you're not working, right? Mm. It means you got no money. Mm. And you forget little like structure you don't have a meeting and whatever the meetings don't get scheduled without you mm. right or like opportunities don't come unless you you don't check your email or, or you don't like you know do follow-ups so things like that i i kind of took for granted during this period mm. and it was definitely a bit stressful but remembering why i wanted to go back to it is very important so for me i i like to take stock of my achievements and look back on, you know, those moments where you're like, this is why I'm doing it. You kind of need to remind yourself of mm. that. Otherwise, right. it's very hard to stay op like optimistic about a situation that's a bit dull because you will have lull periods. Mm. And then as a freelancer, your admin game must be quite strong, right? You are everything. You're your oh, own photographer, sales, yeah. marketing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You don't so go, like, bad, need to like, I mean. chase people for money. Oh, eh? uh, like, yeah. <laughs> like people don't pay. Then you Mothership like... call me woman complaints before, you know. Huh? huh? Yeah. Mothership? Yeah. What happened? So, so once... Uh, uh, a vendor didn't pay me on time. And this vendor is notorious for not paying a lot of people on time. Mm. And I was sick of it because yeah. I'm like, there's a reason this. why oh. like invoices have TNCs. Yeah, and sometimes yeah, yeah. you add the clause, right? They don't follow. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I decided, you know what, this is ridiculous. I posted a little rant on Facebook. <laughs> I didn't name names. I just said, I think it's time like this stops. Like this shit is old. Yeah. And like, you you want to get an F and B service? You also pay first, what mm. right? How come it's thirty days, then we come forty five days, sixty days? So I just come like I just rented, and then Mothership posted my artist bio. Ah, is my face like that? <laughs> <laughs> then the title they put woman, woman or lady complaints like complaints about uh freelance payment. Oh wow! I mean, some good came out of that. They ended up being a seminar on like how to teach freelancers to to get paid on time, and mm. there was an actual thing that like, lawyers were brought in and they mm. were educating people how to draft out contracts for free like they were mm. contacting people so it was pretty cool sometimes you need to build out this this set of like soft skills on top of like mm. whatever you are transitioning to la. Mm. Like, just now yeah. that was agreeing yeah. when you yeah, said, yeah. I you felt to do, uh, like, fervent yeah. 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 what's your experience as in for me the admin struggle is mostly like personal but generally I wasn't very good with admin especially in tracking how many sessions my clients have done. Oh. Yeah. So you have no system. Well, important, eh? Yeah. So if you're a freelancer, <laughs> like either you you start looking for smart ways to do it. So mm. like free Tools. premium subscriptions, Apps, yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff, mm. which now I have in place really. But when mm. I first started, it was like 
Excel spreadsheet or like notes on my phone. Then mm. I'm like, very disorganized. So like mm. my client comes sometimes I don't even remember that they came. Then I don't know. So I have to go back to the WhatsApp. You want to like charge that time? Don't know how many yeah. sessions to charge. Oh. You know? oh. <laughs> but payment, payment wise, like from the start, I always like ask for payment up front. Yeah. With context to your situation, you already had the set of skills to propel yourself into the fitness industry. Like you already had your certification and mm. you knew. But for some people who want a career switch to something completely different, they might not know what to do and they might have to go through this period where they basically don't take a pay or they have to pick up like a part-time job for example mm. just to tide them through the time they are going back to school or mm. going to take a short course again and i find that that takes a lot of courage, courage there. yes yeah. like you're basically going back i wouldn't say regression but it might feel like a regression simply because you are back to your old days Training, and the rest like, of your friends yeah. are maybe like going further in their careers and you have to one step back. attend a course Three first step back. and then maybe like go through the job struggle again. Yeah. I think that's something that I never really realised also. Yeah. I did consider going back to like studying for mm. example. Mm. But oh, I cannot. Eh. Just imagining no yeah. salary and income I, it scares it's me scary, so much. Yeah. 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 And especially at the age where you career switch you're usually a bit older you yeah. don't have peers going through the same thing as you so you don't have that community support it might be hard to find like a mentor or even like yeah. friends within that circle. I think mm. the mentorship thing important. Right? Okay, so for myself, I went into a gym first. Mm. And going into a gym, being a new hire with no experience, they put you through like proper structured training. And I feel very blessed to have like gone to that gym, mm. even though it was like three, four months. Mm. And then I left on my own. But they taught me a lot of the things that set the foundations for how I still continue to train my clients these days. After that, I also moved to a gym that like had really nice freelance trainer so it's a pure freelance gym and yeah people are willing to give you like pieces of advice here and there mm. i think we've talked a lot about being freelancers and i think because we are all in the media space right but yeah. what if people want to transition from corporate to another kind of corporate job i think mm. the networking is quite important it's networking. the same thing la. So you, linkedin la. Uh, yeah linkedin yeah linkedin, LinkedIn like yeah. cafe yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> i have people who reach out to me also also wanting to make a career switch so they are doing completely unrelated things but then they want to come into advertising or they want to move into like a agency setting la. so then they would really just reach out and then say that they want to do coffees and things like that i don't respond to all of like all of them like so some like one or two here and there i will but then i think it's quite good that like they are building their network law so that you know they can find out more about what to expect from the industry they know what to expect when they make the transition and, and mm. things like that also you said like uh only one or two mm. you will respond to uh, how like, i choose uh. yeah let them know like you know how should i be maybe if i want to like get that coffee oh. i think like if it's not too transactional and then like if you also need to you also need to justify like what your motivations are for like what do you want to get out of it like and what are the insights that you want to get out of it if it's really like just like you are co-calling me to give you a job, then it's usually a bit more like, oh, okay, I cannot guarantee you that, so I'm not going to agree to to mm. meet. But if it's really pure like just vibes or like, <laughs> then okay. This is uh, not a date eh. No, 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 yeah. So, uh, and then that's the other thing also. So sometimes like, even though it's LinkedIn, right? There are some people that are quite strange the way they use LinkedIn. How, how? Like they will just be like, uh, oh, hey, I thought your, your... Oh, hey. <laughs> Oh, oh. No, like your, your your profile is very interesting, that kind of thing. Like, oh, we'd love to like find out more, that kind of thing. Then it's a bit like, yeah. <laughs> what about this is Tinder it? or LinkedIn? Sorry. Yeah, wrong no, app, like, wrong app. If you want to network pro- professionally, you must uh, network professionally. Don't um, try to kill two birds with one stone. Wait, yeah. someone tried to hit on you? Like on LinkedIn. Man. But it could be like... Guy or girl, guy or girl. Got both before lah. <laughs> Yeah, but then oh. it, could be, the it could be catfishing also. Ma. Okay, wait, I have a question for Val. Huh? Are you comfortable sharing? You don't need to give specific numbers, but okay. how much of a pay cut did you take transitioning mm. into uh, training at the like right from the get-go? So from not the, now, mm-mm. but from your stable, good-paying corporate job. To like to say the first the six Cause months. Cause mm. 40%. Well, okay. quick meh. On my pay, mm. like base pay, 40%. Yeah. Okay. And at that time I had comms also in my corporate job. Oh, okay. Wow. But I told myself, like, don't look at the comms. Just base to base, lah. Yeah. Now hit parity already? Now more than parity already. Wow. But it's Play. been like coming with three years. Wow. Thank Crushed you to it. my clients. Yeah. So I think yeah. at, at the same time, also, like, do you put a time frame as to, okay, when am I going to hit this amount? Yes. If not, maybe need to reconsider. Yes. What and was I'm that? that kind of person, like, yeah. wherever I go, I just like, 
Time go and financial go. Time go and financial go. How long did you give yourself? Wow, your night. <laughs> I hate you a lot. Eh? You, I like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, I plan everything one. But whether I follow through, I don't know. I just like to use all the markers. And the <laughs> Whenever it's just in my head. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. do it. Like, I gave myself a year hmm. to hit parity. And then beyond that, it cannot drop below already. Wow. But that stresses me out because even in PT, there are periods like, like December. Yeah. Yeah. But after Chinese New Year, you will get yeah. Chinese New Year, so people go away. No, Jan no, first. Like New Year, Jan New Year. Yeah. 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 But they are then, it's yeah. a cycle. Like, after a while, you will know Definitely. the cycles. Yeah. 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 Then you've got to like, when it's hot uh, and all clients are ready to train, right, you've got to just whack. Yeah. When they post story of them eating the kueh bangkit, then you just react. This face, you do the this face. I got a few clients, uh, like, they don't want to accept my follower request. <laughs> then I will ask them in session, like, why don't I accept, accept now? <laughs> they don't like to see what they eat. Yeah. So they like, Friday, go chong. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. honestly, when I had a PT for a while, right, like this, uh, early this year, sometimes I lie to her. La. Yeah. <laughs> if know. you're watching. You got clocked in your steps. Yeah, I did. <laughs> How many cows you eat? Did they got hit macros? What did you eat today? Then I, I totally <laughs> missed out on the information that I ate fried chicken. Forget, forget. <laughs> Sorry. No, I think fried chicken is non-negotiable. It must be in your diet. Right? Important. Yeah. Especially the fried chicken skin. No skin. Oh my god, no. <laughs> How to eat? Then you're just eating a naked nugget. Have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? Yes. Like mm. fully. Then so, how, uh? to a certain extent, you yourself know that compared to the best in the industry now, mm. like basically when we enter any industrial role, we always want to look at the best possible example, right? So compared to this gold standard of what things can be, where am I? And why do I fall short, right? So then you can break it down, right? Like, is it in the space of skills and mm. experience? So if I'm not confident because of my experience, because I didn't have enough clients at that time or whatever, I've not touched with a lot of like uh, problems along the way. I can only let myself write it through. But what can I work on? I can work on my knowledge. I can work on talking to people. I can work on, I don't know, my my branding, my social media. There's a lot of other things that I can work on mm -hmm. to help myself, you know? And then I got to be honest, uh, like, am I putting in the work? Am I genuine about this? Like, is the effort real? And then I think that's the only way you can answer to yourself. The rest of it, you have to like, mm. to a certain extent, let it, like, let it be and just write it out. Because any job, like corporate or freelance or fitness mm. or creative or whatever, experience is always the, the, the thing that you cannot buy, you know? Mm. And it does shape you very differently the longer you mm. stay. And I think people also need to realise that imposter syndrome is not something that comes only with a career transition. Yeah. Like, even if you stay in your current job, if you get a promotion, then sometimes you might feel like, yeah. oh, yeah. If you get a new project yeah. that requires a different set of skills, right? Yeah. yeah. You have so, to fake it to make it. Like. Exactly. Everything so, new and unfamiliar. Mm. That's why sometimes it's inevitable that you need to step out of your comfort zone. La. Yeah. Yeah. But that's how change and growth happens. Mm. Wow. Okay, Val, do you have mm. any regrets after making the switch? Can I say no? Yeah. yeah. Because honestly, I really have no yeah. regrets. Like, wow. it was basically everything that I could have dreamed of in terms of even the challenges even the moments, there were some really dark moments. Man. I'm not going to go in and say like, oh, I made this transition, everything was great, all my mm. friends support me. Yeah, there were moments that were really tough for me. I'm like, should I still do this? Like, does it even make sense? But in terms of, do I regret anything? Like, turn back time, will I do anything different? No, I'll do everything the mm. same. Because wow. it's everything that actually I felt propelled the learning process for me here. Mm. Yeah. So to end off, what advice would you have to give to someone who is looking to career switch, but is held back by fear? For me, I'll always sort out the practical stuff first. So mm. everything practical, cover it off. Your liabilities, your, uh, I don't know, age or timeline or whatever, whatever commitments you have. Then it's like, for me, I always plan it out such that there's sort of a very minor overlap. So before I start, I know that I kind of set the grounds for everything else mm. there already. Mm. So it's like, I have identified the company I want to go for. I have spoken to people. I have uh, my financial uh, safety net, my... The people who matter enough are supportive of me such that if I fail, I know that at least emotionally, there's a support for mm. me. I can like go to someone to get through this, you mm. know? Definitely ideal situation to be able to secure. I know the job market now is very tough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have a lot of friends who want to switch, but then even with a long notice period, yeah. like for example, three to four months, mm. that's a very long notice it's period. Very long. That's enough for you to go and find a new job during mm. that period. And they still don't want to take the leap. It just shows how scary it is and how unnerving it is for people to accept the risk of 
losing stability for a while. Yeah. And personally lah for me, I feel like if if you have that much of, of a heads up mm. and you still don't want to take the lead, then maybe it just shows you're not ready yet. Or you don't, or really, you don't really want, want it that yeah, badly. Yeah, you don't really want it that badly yeah, exactly. Either the push or the pull is not strong yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing I realised, right, the best time to do a career switch is when you don't have a family. Yes. Yeah. It's true it's la, really, Like once you have yeah. kids, right, I can understand how tough it, it's going to be. The other thing also is when you have a partner, right, then you not just have to convince yourself to make mm. that career switch, which is sometimes already like very daunting and a very Tough big enough. task. Yeah, man. Then you need to convince your partner also that like, oh, I'm going to make this career transition. If that okay, she has to shoulder it or they have to yeah. shoulder it for yeah. that period. If, and if it goes wrong. Like, yeah. Then you're answerable to that person. Then you see, I told you don't do it. Yeah, there's a lot to consider. <laughs> so, I mean, those are some things to consider like, um, you know, family and like being answerable to other people. So, yeah. LinkedIn can become dating site. Link- Next time I try. <laughs> you, you got people here on hey, your LinkedIn for? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, really? As in, yeah. Go and create LinkedIn, I'm sure. No, I got LinkedIn. But I oh. always don't open LinkedIn. Oh, okay. Yeah. I said before already, I don't like, they tell you who's looking at your profile or like whatever. <laughs> like, Stalker, if you got the gold one, if you got premium, they'll they will tell you who. who. Yeah. But this yeah. one, they say someone is viewing, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> who? Yeah, who? You tell me. Who? Tell me. <laughs> Yeah, I have to remember. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was like, I was like <laughs> talking here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe her mic can pick up. You're not laughing with my mic, is it? <laughs> I want to okay. be close to you. 